Got a parcel. Ah, cool. Actually, I've been waiting for this to arrive. You're probably wondering why I'm excited about this thing, but it's gonna make my filming a bit easier. And that makes me think about a good thing we should talk about in the lesson today. Filming yourself is one of the most important things you can do when learning saxophone. And the most important thing about it is, to... right, let's go up to the studio and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So let's talk about videoing your saxophone. It's such a great thing. It's one of the best things you can do to help you learn really, really quickly. In fact, you know, within my sax school membership community, there's thousands of players in there. I'm always encouraging them to video themselves and people are doing it every single day and the progress is amazing. If you want to check out those videos, by the way, that's inside mcgillmusic.com. And um, we've got hundreds of videos in there that'll teach you everything from getting started to improvising and all that sort of stuff. You can get a 30-day trial. I'll I'll put the link for the 30-day free trial down below. But the, the reason that I encourage my students to video themselves is because it's such a great tool for improving. It's really the only way that you can see outside of yourself and you know really notice the stuff that's going on. We'll talk about that in a second, but first I want to share a couple of quick tips on how you can get started videoing yourself. And it doesn't need to be complicated. Now this is some of the stuff I use when I'm making videos. But to be honest with you, most of us have got a great video making tool right in our pocket. If you've got a smartphone, an iPhone, a Samsung Galaxy, or one of those Google phones, Pixel or whatever, any of these smartphones are brilliant tools for making videos. They've got wonderful cameras in them, they've got the they record pretty good audio, and the best thing is they're actually in your pocket ready to go. So this is the first place I would suggest you start with videoing yourself. Now to make it a bit easier, I mean you can obviously you can lean it up on a bookshelf or something, but uh, there's this cool thing I found online. Now this is a really useful little tool. Let me show you how it works with the iPhone. I've got one of these. I love these things. This is by Joby and it's called a Gorillapod. And I use this all the time because it's got these flexible legs. You can make it any shape you want. So with this and this, you're sorted. Okay, so basically your little clamp goes on the top. So can you see how that little clamp goes just on the top of the Gorillapod there, really cool. And this is the iPhone 6 Plus, so it's even an older iPhone, and it's a big one, but it fits in really, really well. So then, I can plonk it down, and I can get myself stood in front of it, and start videoing, it's as easy as that. Now if you're videoing yourself with a backing track, all you gotta do is play the backing track through a stereo, or your Amazon Alexa, or your, um, your TV, anything that you can use to, you know, make loud audio, which is the same way that you would practice, right? If you were practicing with a backing track, you'd have it playing through something, through your computer speakers. So just stand next to your, your speakers, have your backing track, cranked up decent, uh, decent volume, have your camera set up, press record, and you're done. The really cool thing about doing it on your iPhone is that immediately you've got that video footage in there that you can share straight away. So you can stick it on Facebook, you can stick it on YouTube, you're ready to go. Now if you're an iPad user, this is also an awesome tool for making videos. Again, it's got, on the back there, it's got a brilliant camera, really, really good. The audio it creates is pretty good. It's also, you know, in the one box. You don't need any cables, anything else. Now for the iPad, I use a different clamp. I found this thing online. I think this is brilliant. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so there you go. So by clipping this iPad stand onto my little Joby Gorillapod, then you've got a really cool clamp for your iPad when you tighten it up properly. So you see what that looks like? Dead easy. Now remember the really cool thing about using your iPhone or using your iPad is that as soon as you've recorded your video, it's in your device and it's ready to use straight away or ready to share. Now you really need to be recording yourself regularly and that's why it's important to make it easy. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. Now here's a couple of other things that I use. Uh, if you've got these kicking around your house, then these are a great thing to use for videoing as well. First of all is the GoPro Hero. Now this is a Hero 4. It's not even a new GoPro, but it's such a great tool. I love the GoPro because it's so small and it records great video, particularly in daylight, and it records okay audio, but the best thing about it is how portable it is. And I got one of these as well, which I think these are awesome. So this is the GoPro 
I don't know what you call it, a selfie stick, I suppose, but absolutely fantastic because, well, if you want to use it as a selfie stick, that is cool. Check out this, it does all of that. But the thing I really love about it is this, and this is good for saxophone players. So down the bottom here, unscrew it at the bottom, and inside you've got a little tripod stand. Screw it back together, there we go. And then straight away, you've got your GoPro on a stand ready to go. And this is really cool because you can fit that in your saxophone case, which means you could take it to a gig, you could record yourself, stick it on a, on one of the ta front tables and record the show, or stick it on the guitar player's amplifier or whatever, you can have it and record yourself. And it's all in the one box, fits in your saxophone case, piece of cake. So if you're a GoPro user, I definitely suggest one of those. The next step up, if you've got a SLR, and this is what I use all the time, this is a Canon 750D. There's lots of great, inexpensive uh, digital SLRs on the market these days. When I'm recording my sax school lessons, I've got a couple of these, and this is what I use. And this is obviously a bit more complicated than these other setups because I need to use an external microphone, and I use video editing software, and I've got a fancy tripod, and lights, and all these extra gear, which starts to make it complicated. That's wonderful if you want to get really great quality video, but to be honest with you, ah, I've got alerts. People are sending me messages, lovely. So that's great if you want to make good quality video, but really the most important thing about videoing yourself is making it quick and easy. Okay, so let's talk about why you should record your saxophone. The thing is, recording yourself is kind of like practicing with a friend. You video yourself while you're playing and then watch back that footage and you'll be surprised at the stuff that you'll hear that you didn't notice before. It gives you a chance to look at your fingers, your posture, gives you a chance to listen to your tone, and also to be aware of little details in your playing like your articulation, your breathing, uh, your, your phrasing, all sorts of, all the detail-y stuff that when you're busy playing and focusing on your music and thinking about all the different stuff you need to do as a saxophone player, you don't really have a chance to think about. So I suggest with, when it comes to videoing yourself, there's two approaches. The number one is a sort of short-term goal. So if you're working on a piece of music, why not set yourself a goal that at the end of the week, you're going to video one section. And this is just for you. So maybe it's just the first eight bars, maybe it's the A section, or the first page of a big piece of music. Set yourself a goal of making a video of yourself playing that section after a week and then go back and watch that video and see which things you liked and which things you didn't and which things you can improve. And then the following week you can make another video and improve those things and maybe even move on to another section. So make it as an incremental step where you're making a, a video for each little section just for yourself. But then also set yourself a long-term goal with videoing so that perhaps at the end of a month you're going to make a video of a whole piece of music that you're working on. And this is fantastic. So it's kind of like the end point of learning a piece of music. Now something I hear all the time from people is I've just, I'm working on too many different things, particularly if you're an adult learner and uh, it's so easy to look at a hundred different pieces of music and you end up having a music stand with loads and loads of stuff on it. Is that like you? Are you like that with loads of stuff on your music stand? If you are, I'll bet that you often feel as if you're really not focused on any one particular thing. We all do it, don't worry. Don't feel guilty about it, we all do the same thing. But the better way to do it is to focus on one piece of music and set yourself a goal to video that piece of music when you have it down, when you feel comfortable with it. And then, once you've made that video, share it. Stick it on YouTube, stick it on the Facebook, uh, on Facebook, on your, on your Facebook page. Now inside the Sax School membership community, we've got a really active community of people who are always videoing themselves and sharing things on our private Facebook group. There's videos up there all the time. And I love seeing those because they're a record of where people are up to in their practice at that particular point. So it's something to be really proud of. It's a, personally, it's a record of where you're up to, but also it's a great way to share with other people and get some feedback from people. You'd be surprised how valuable that is, not only with your confidence, but also for getting good, constructive criticism on the, the ways that you can improve your saxophone. So set yourself a long-term goal when you are ready, when you finish playing a piece of music, to record it and then share it with somebody. Hey, now if you can do this consistently over a whole year, let's say you're doing one of these every month, can you imagine by the end of the year, you could look back over the whole year and see a whole series of videos that you've made 
and you'll be able to see and chart your progress throughout that whole year. I promise you it's so valuable to you and you'll feel so good about yourself to be able to look back and see your progress over that period of time. So I hope that's helped you to understand a little bit more about why you should video yourself and also how you can get started doing it super quickly. So let me know in a comment below whether you use any of this gear. Do you record on your iPhone? Do you use a camera? What do you use? Do you do something completely different? And also let me know in a comment if recording yourself has helped you as a saxophone player to learn. I'd really like to know about that. So hopefully that's been helpful. Keep practicing. Make yourself a video today. Go ahead and do it. I'll catch you next time.